From Kansas City, we have game two of the Pine Tar Baseball Great Teams Tournament World Series featuring the 1964 Philadelphia Phillies at the 1980 Kansas City Royals. This is game two. The pitchers for the Phillies, Chris Short, the left-hander, in the tournament, 3-0, and and an outstanding part of this team, maybe their most valuable, valuable player to this point. He will be faced by the man who is maybe the Royals' most valuable player to this point, and that's Larry Gura, 4-0 and in the tournament, and just dominant in every start. So uh, let's go through the lineups and get this game going. Uh, for the 64 Phillies, a few lineup changes from game one. Leading off at second base, Tony Taylor, that's no different. Right fielder, John Callison bats second. Richie Allen bats third at third base. A new guy to the lineup, uh, has played before in the tournament, but not in the series. Alex Johnson betting fourth. Oh, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Frank Thomas, not that Frank Thomas, will bat fourth today and do the DH responsibilities. Tony Gonzalez will bat fifth and play center. Alex Johnson, there he is, will bat sixth and play left field. Vic Power will bat seventh and play first base. Gus Triandos will bat 8th and catch. And Bobby Wine will bat ninth and play shortstop. The pitcher, Chris Short. And as you can see, Chris Short on the road as I drop everything known to man. On the road, Chris Short is an A-plus pitcher the first two times through the order and an A-plus pitcher after that. He has strikeout modifiers on 55 and 77 and he can give you seven innings unless... He pitches well, and then he can keep going. For the homestanding 1980 Kansas City Royals, leading off in left field, Willie Wilson. Betting second, the DH, Hal McRae. Betting third, third baseman, George Brett. Betting fourth, tossed from yesterday's game by Ronnie Millsap, the home plate umpire, is Amos Otis, the center fielder. Lineup change against the left-hander, Willie Aiken stays in today, bats fifth and plays first base. Jose Cardinal will bat sixth and play right field. Daryl Porter will bat seventh and catch. Frank White will bat eighth and play second base. And UL Washington will bat ninth and play shortstop. The pitcher for the Royals today, Larry Gura. At home, also A+, plus, A+. Plus. No strikeout or walk modifiers, and he can give you eight. And he can go further with good performance. And if uh, the series is any judge, he will have a good performance. All right, so Gura's on the mound finishing his warm-up tosses. Tony Taylor is ready to step in to start game number two of the Pine Tar Baseball World Series in my great team's tournament. Uh, Pine Tar Baseball, TTLBaseballGame.com, TTLBaseballGame.com. This set is available for you. Pine Tar Baseball, we had a poll back in January, and that's how these 16 teams in this set were selected. Pitch to Taylor to start this game. He is hit in the air to left field, and that's going to be Willie Wilson with loads of room, and that's one down in the first. Johnny Callison will stand in. The left-handed batting right fielder may be the Phillies' most valuable player in 64. The pitch to him is a fly ball to left field. That's also going to be taken by Willie Wilson without too much trouble. And it's two up, two down in the first. Gura seems to be on his game. Richie Allen, third baseman, 318 in 1964. Two outs and nobody on, and this one's hit hard. 
right field. He goes the other way, Cardinal to the wall, and it is gone. Richie Allen has left the building. So has Elvis. And it's 1-0, 64 Phillies. Their hot play continues. They are 10-2 and two in this tournament compared to the Royals, who are 9-6. and six. Pitch to Frank Thomas. And he strikes him out on some Larry Gura junk. We go to the bottom of the first, but the Phillies break out on top. Unbelievably hot team right now. Can the can the Royals cool them off? It's one nothing Phillies. We go to the bottom of the first. Chris Short taking the mound. It's going to be Wilson, McRae, and Brett for Kansas City in the bottom of the first. Pitch to Willie is slapped to center field, but Tony Gonzalez does not play deep, and he will get there for out number one. Hal McRae. DH for Kansas City today. He hits a comebacker to Chris Short. He grabs it and flips to Vic Power at first base. That's two down. And George Brett. George Brett against Short. Hit in the air to center. It's going to drive Gonzalez back, but he's going to get there and make the play. And we've played one inning. In Kansas City, it's one nothing Phillies in Game 2. The Phillies, Game 1 winner by a score of 3-2. to two, Jim Bunning beating Dennis Leonard. And Tony Gonzalez, Alex Johnson, Vic Power will be up for the Phillies in this inning. Tony strikes out against the lefty Gura. That's Gura's second on the day. One gone in the second. Alex Johnson... 303 in 1964, platooned for most of the season, not all, but most of the season with West Covington and left. This one's hit hard. Going to be over Otis's head and bounce off the wall, the padding in center field. Alex Johnson has himself a one-out double, and the Phillies have another scoring opportunity in the second. Gurra's got to keep this thing under control. Vic Power stands in, 239. A September trade for Vic. Landed him on the Phillies. The pitch. And Vic Power lines it to right field. He goes the other way. Cardinal grabs it, but Johnson is already around third. He will score, and Vic Power has driven in the Phillies' second run. It's 2 nothing Phillies as the throw from Cardinal comes into second base. With one out, it's Vic Power at first. Gus Triandos stepping into the batter's box to try his hand at Larry Gura. The pitch from Gura is hit hard. This one is to right field. He's going the other way. Cardinal to the wall. Again, it is gone. And Gus Triandos with a two-run bomb He's left the building. So has Elvis. It's three, a three-run second inning and four runs total for the Phillies. They lead game two early by a score of four to nothing. Larry Gurra upset with himself on the mound. This is already his worst start of the tournament. Bobby Wine stands in with one man out and three runs in. Bobby Wine hits a grounder to short. UL Washington grabs it and throws to Willie Aikens for two down. And Tony Taylor, with two outs and nobody on. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Pitch to Tony. We got a range check. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. Get to the kitchen for the love of God. Let's see who Tony hit this one at. That is to the third baseman, Brett. He's got it. He's going to fire to first, and that will retire the Phillies in the second, but a three-run inning for the Phillies extends their lead to 4 nothing. And the way Chris Short has been pitching in this tournament, that is a lot of runs. Go to the bottom of the second, 4 nothing Phils. It's Otis, Akins, and Cardinal for Kansas City in the bottom of the second. Amos. 
Strikes out on some Chris Short gas. That's Short's first strikeout of the game. And it's going to bring up Aikens with one man out in the second. He's in on a hunch. Jim Fry has not started him against a lefty yet in this tournament. The pitch hit on the ground to first. That's Vic Power who's going to take it unassisted for the second out in the second inning. And Jose Cardinal, 263 in 1980. And this one's hitting the air to left. Alex Johnson's got room, and he will make the play for out number three in the second. Six up, six down for short. We go to the third. It's Callison, Allen, and Thomas to face Larry Gura. Gura is not on his game today. He's got to get it together, though. And hold the Phillies where they are so the Royals can mount a comeback. Callison is 0 for 1 today, 274 on the season. Not this way, he's not. Line drive, base hit, right field. Callison pulls it, and he's got himself a single. And with nobody out, the Phillies are at it again in the third. Richie Allen stands in, hit a solo bomb in the first. 318 in 1964, along with the Rookie of the Year. And this one is a base hit to center field. Allen takes it up the middle, but Amos Otis is on it in a hurry, so Callison's going to stop at second. And with nobody out, there's two men on and Frank Thomas at the plate. Not that Frank Thomas. 0 for 1 with a strikeout. A double play target if Gura can get him to hit it on the ground. But can he get him to hit it on the ground? The pitch. Is a ground ball shortstop. UL Washington. Gloves it. Goes to White for 1. Out there to Aikens for 2. Safe at first. Aikens is off the base. And Thomas is safe on the fielder's choice. Callison gets to third. Phillies now with runners at first and third, and nobody, and one out. Uh, and that's going to force the Kansas City infield to come in. They don't want this fifth run to score. So with first and third and one out, Gonzalez stands in at the plate. A lefty against the left-handed hitting Gura. Pitching Gura, the pitch to Tony is a looper to left. It's going to get over UL Washington's glove and bounce to Willie Wilson. That's going to score Callison from third. Thomas will stop at second. It's 5 nothing Phillies. That's going to cost Gura a letter grade. He's down to an A now. And... First and second with one man out for Alex Johnson. Doubled and scored in the second, 303 on the season. Pitch to Alex is an error check. Error check. Johnson hits it hard. At Frank White. Let's see what Frank's doing. Frank White boots it. Frank White with an E4. That's going to load the bases with one out for Vic Power. Philly's threatening to run away with this thing. The infield is going to play back for a double play. The bases are loaded with Phillies. Gird of the belt. Checks the runners. The pitch home to Power. They're hoping for a double play. Vic Power strokes it into center field, a base hit. That's going to score Thomas from third. Gonzalez will stop at third, and the bases remain loaded. It's 6 nothing Phillies in the third inning. Gus Triandos, one out. Infield still back. He hit a two-run bomb last inning. He does that again, and it's time to walk the dog. Triandos 
at the plate, the infield at double play depth, Gurr to the belt, the pitch home to Gus. Struck him out on a Gura sinker, and that's two outs. Bobby Wine comes to the plate with two outs, and two runs in at 6 nothing Phillies here in the third. Bobby Wine with the bases still dripping. This one hit on the ground to short. UL is going to flip it to Frank, and that will retire the Phillies in the third. But two more come across the plate, and we go to the bottom of the third with the score. Philadelphia 6, Kansas City nothing. And it's the bottom third of the Royals order, Porter, White, and Washington. It's early. They've got time, but they got to get it going here. Porter hits it on the ground to third. That's taken by Richie Allen, who throws to power for the out. Frank White. 264 on his season. Lifted to right. Callison with room. Two down. And UL Washington. UL, ground ball third. Richie Allen to power. Retires the side. Nine up, nine down for Chris Short. We go to the fourth. It's 6 nothing Phillies. Larry Gura on the mound. Struggling through this game. Tony Taylor, Johnny Callison, Richie Allen... And Taylor strikes out on a Gura sinker. One down in the fourth. Can Gura right the ship? Callison, one for two, a run scored on the day. Struck him out. Two up, two down. Gura doesn't, hasn't done that since the first inning. We go to the nobody out and two on. Richie Allen, two for two with a solo dong in the first. Richie Allen with another hit. It's a base hit to center. He's taking him right up the middle. Three for three for Allen. And Frank Thomas with two outs and Allen on first. Thomas, a strikeout and a run scored in the third. Frank Thomas is on fire. He goes the other way. Base hit to right. Cardinal is on it and gets it back in. Allen holds at second. And Tony Gonzalez will be up. One for two for Tony with a ribby and a whiff. Pitch home to him. Is lifted in the air to right. Cardinal's got room and he will make the play for the third out of the inning. So even when Gura gets out of it, he gets, he gets <laughs> some uneasy moments. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Phillies six, Royals nothing. Kansas City game two. Phillies lead the series one game to nothing. It's a best of seven. Willie Wilson 0 for 1. Willie chops it off the plate, straight up in the air. Chris Short in to grab it. He does and throws to first to power. It's late. Wilson beats out the infield hit, and he's aboard. He is aboard with nobody on, and Gus Triandos has a minus five. That knocks him down to an 82 if they're going to send him. McCray stands in. 0 for 1 for Hal. Wilson is holding. The pitch home is a line. No, he miss... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He struck him out. One down. Wilson holds at first. Brett is up. 0 for 1 on the day. 390 on the season. Gurr to the belt. The pitch home. Struck him out on a strikeout modifier. 77. Two down, and Otis. Wilson works on his lead. He's going. 
The throw from Triandos to Taylor is not in time. Willie Wilson steals second base and is in scoring position for Otis, who is down a strike. It's 0-1 to Amos Otis. Willie Aikens on deck. The pitch to Amos. Gay struck him out. Short gets the side after giving up a leadoff single. We go to the fifth. It's 6-0, 64 Phillies. Larry Gura back on the mound. Alex Johnson, Vic Power, Gus Triandos in the fifth. One for two for Alex with a run scored on his day. This one is a ground ball to short. UL Washington gloves it and throws across for one down. Vic Power, two for two, a pair of ribbies, a run scored. Pitch to Vic. Hit in the air to center. No, no, excuse me. This one's going to drop. He's three for three. A base hit for power. Falls in front of Amos Otis as a base hit. And Triando steps to the plate with power at first. And one man out. Triando's one for two with the two-run dong in the second. This one lifted in the air to center. Amos Otis is going to have room. He's back a few steps, but he will make the play. And that's two down. And now with two down and two out and one man on, it's Bobby Wine. 0 for 2 today. Bobby hits a ground ball to short. That's UL Washington. He's going to go the short way to Frank White. And that retires the Phillies in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through. 64 Phillies, 6. 80 Royals, nothing in game two of the World Series. Now a word from our sponsors. Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com. Pine Tar Baseball, where you get these cards and this fantastic game. Our other sponsor, of course, it's Lakeside Beef. And not just Lakeside Beef with beef in a can, but you're getting juices too. It's Lakeside Beef with juices. 24 ounces of artery clogging goodness. If you eat this, you're going to be dead before, <laughs> before your head <laughs> It's the kitchen table. That's right. Let's look at the nutrition facts. One quarter of a cup of this stuff, it may or may not be radioactive, gives you 20% of your saturated fats for the entire day. So if you can gag down one and a quarter cups of this stuff, and God help you if you can, then you will have maxed out on your saturated fat for one entire day. You think it's low in cholesterol? Guess again, bucko. 12% 12, 12 of your cholesterol for the day from one quarter of a cup. Mmm, -mm. and the taste, <laughs> I'm sure the taste is gonna keep you coming back for more. So get, for the love of God, Get to your grocer and ask for a lakeside beef with juices in a 24-ounce can. You'll be glad you did. Your gastrointestinal system will thank you. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Philly 6, Royals 4. Royals nothing, sorry. Philly 6, Royals nothing. And Chris Short's back on the mound. He's given up one hit. That's his only base runner. And Willie Aikens... Jose Cardinal and Daryl Porter stand in. Aikens with a comebacker to Short, who grabs it and flips to Vic Power for out number one in the fifth for Kansas City. Jose Cardinal stands in. His day, 0 for 1. That is a ball four. Jose draws a walk. And he's aboard. That's Short's first walk on the day. And Daryl Porter 
who's been dangerous in this whole tournament. Didn't have a great year in 1980, but he's sure dangerous in this tournament. The pitch to him is ball two. He's ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Pitch to Darrell is ball four. Wait, 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 Said Porter went around. He did not check his swing, and so that's two down with Cardinal still on first and Frank White coming to bat. Pitch to Frank. Hit in the air to left. Alex Johnson is going to be there to make the play. That will retire the Royals in the fifth. We go to the sixth. It's still Philadelphia six, and it's still Kansas City nothing. In game two of the great team's World Series. Top of the order for Philadelphia in the sixth. They want to put this thing away. It's Taylor, Callison, and Allen. Taylor's 0 for 3. The pesky leadoff hitter for the Phillies strikes out swinging on some Larry Gura heat. And I use that term in its broadest sense. Johnny Callison, 1 for 3. With a run scored and a whiff on his day. Dangerous in that number two spot in the order. The pitch from Gura. Grounded to first. That's Willie Aikens who gloves it. He's going to flip to Gura covering. And that's two down. And now Richie Allen, three for three with a solo dong in the first. Pitch to Richie. is a strikeout. Gura gets him this time. And it's a 1-2-3 for the Royals left-hander. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's UL Washington. It's Willie Wilson. And it's Hal McRae for the Kansas City attack in the bottom of the sixth. UL 0 for 1 on the day. Hit in the air to center. This one's going to be taken by Tony Gonzalez for out number one in the sixth. Short is just dominant. One hit and one walk is all he's given up. Five strikeouts on the day. Pitch to Willie Wilson. Is looped by Wilson to right field. Just past Tony Taylor's outstretched glove. And he's aboard with a single. Hal McRae. Coming up now, he's 0 for 2 with George Brett on deck. Pitch to Hal. And as soon as I say that Chris Short is dominant, we get a couple of hits. It's a base hit to right field for McRae. Willie Wilson does not want to run into an out on the bases. He will stop at second base. No, he won't. He's going to third base. It looked like he was going to stop, but he's not going to stop. He's going to go to third. The Royals have men at the corners. With one man out and George Brett at the plate. George is 0 for 2 with a strikeout on his day against Short. Phillies defense at double play depth. The pitch to George Brett is ball 2. Brett's ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. This is not the situation you like if you're a Phillies fan. Pitch to Brett. You can't get behind him. It's a base hit to center field. Tony Gonzalez will glove it on a couple of hops. Willie Wilson scores from second. Hal McRae stops it from third. Hal McRae stops at second. The Royals are on the board at 6-1. to one, And Short is looking mortal. Hamas Otis stands in. He's got 0 for 2 today with a pair of strikeouts. The pitch to Otis is a 77. That's a strikeout modifier. Two gone. That's Otis's third strikeout of the day. He's got the hat trick. Next time up, he's going for the golden sombrero. Oh, we have two men on. McRae at second, Brett at first, and two outs for Willie Akins, who's got the power to make it six to four. That's why he's in the game. And he drives one deep to center. Tony Gonzalez is back. 
He bangs off the wall and makes the catch. To end the Royals' six, they score one, but they wanted a lot more. After six innings, it's the Phillies' six, the Royals' one, and we got three innings to go before the Royals go down two games to nothing and going back to Philly for game three. Frank Thomas, not that Frank Thomas, one for three, a strikeout and a run scored, top of the seventh for the Phillies. Thomas, Gonzalez, and Johnson for the Phillies. He draws a walk. Thomas is aboard. The DH in this game. Gonzalez stands in there. Not an accomplished bunter. Although Mock would love to give him the bunt sign. Gonzalez is one for three with a ribby and a whiff today. The center fielder for the Phillies. The pitch is a in the dirt. This pitch is in the dirt. Does Porter block it? Yes, he does. He blocks it. Gonzalez ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. Thomas is at first. The pitch home to Tony. Got a range check. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. Gonzalez slaps this one at... Right fielder Cardinal, who will not get there. It's going to drop for a base hit. Thomas will stop at second, and the Phillies have runners at first and second in the seventh. Fry making a call to the pen. Rennie Martin is going to start warming up. Yeah. Rennie Martin and Gary Christensen, a lefty and a righty. It's double-barreled action in the seventh. Alex Johnson, one for three, a double and a run scored on his day. There's nobody out. Thomas is at second. Gonzalez is at first. Gura's looking for a double play ball. This one's hit on the ground to second. White to Washington for one. To Aikens for two, they got exactly what they wanted. A double play, and Frank Thomas staggers to third base. So with two outs now, Thomas is at third base. And Vic Power, three for three on his day with a pair of ribbies and a run scored. He wants to drive in Thomas for another ribby. This one is looped to center field. It's going to fall in front of Otis. Vic Power is four for four, and Frank Thomas scores from third with the seventh run of the day for Philadelphia. That's going to do it for Gura. Jim Fry has seen enough. He's calling for the right-hander. That's Rennie Martin in the Royals bullpen. Gary Christensen continues to throw. Martin is an A pitcher, as you can see at home. He's an A pitcher. He has walk modifiers all over the place. Rennie was wild. And he can go two innings in relief if needed. With two outs in the seventh, power at first. The Phillies have a run in. It's 7-0 Philadelphia. The pitch at Triandos is lifted in the air to center, and Amos Otis has plenty of room. Rennie Martin gets him out of the inning, but the Phillies add another run on a pair of hits and a ribby the third of the day by Vic Power. You can't stop Vic Power. You can only hope to contain him. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's time to stretch him out and enjoy a can of lakeside beef with juices. If you got it. It's Cardinal, Porter, and White for the Royals in the seventh. Jose is 0 for 1 with a walk. 7-1 Phillies. Pitch to Jose is hit in the air to left. Alex Johnson coming in a few steps, and he'll make the play 
for out number one. Daryl Porter. 0 for 2 on his day. Daryl lifts one in the air to left. This one's going to be taken by Alex Johnson also, and that's two outs. And now Frank White, 0 for 2 on his day. There's a theme here. Pitch from short to white is grounded to shortstop. Bobby Wine gets something to do. He gloves it and throws to Vic Power, and that retires the Royals in the seventh. We go to the eighth. Philadelphia 7, Kansas City 1, and there's six outs to go. Bobby Wine, 0 for 3 on the day for him. And Bobby strikes out on some Rennie Martin gas. One gone in the eighth. Top of the order now, Tony Taylor and Johnny Callison on deck. Tony draws a walk from Rennie Martin. He's not alone in that. First walk for Martin, first walk for Taylor. He's aboard with one out and Callison up. Gary Christensen's going to start throwing again. The pitch is by the pitch to Callison is grounded on uh, to UL Washington. Washington to White, White to Aikens. Double play in the eighth, that kills the Royals' chances, but we go to the bottom of the eighth with the score. Philadelphia 7, Kansas City 1 in game two of this World Series, best of seven of the great team's tournament. Chris Short, maximum he's pitched, seven, but he's allowed two runs or less, so he's still in there. UL, 0 for 2 on the day for him. And this one is... Strike 3 called. Ray Charles just rung him up. For Chris Short, that is strikeout number 7 on the day. Willie Wilson, 2 for 3. The only guy who's done anything against Short... A stolen base and a run scored. Strike. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, yep, 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 yep. He walked him. Chris Short lost him. And Wilson's aboard for the third time today. Hal McRae stands in with George Brett on deck. McRae one for three with a strikeout on his day. And Hal drives it to left. This one's going to get over Alex Johnson's head. It's going to bang off the wall. And they're going to hold Wilson at third. They don't want to risk it. They're going to hold Wilson at third. So with one man out and two on, that will bring up George Brett. And it's also going to bring Bobby Shantz and Ed Roebuck in the Phillies bullpen to start throwing. Lefty and a righty double barreled action in the Phillies bullpen. Royals have two on in scoring position with one man out in the eighth. A hit from Brett would make it interesting. It's one for three for Brett today with a strikeout and the ribbies driven in the only run for the Royals. This one's hit in the air to center. Willie Wilson is tagging. Tony Gonzalez will make the catch. The throw home is not in time. Wilson scores the second run today on a Brett sacrifice fly that cuts the lead to 7-2. to two. And now Amos Otis stands in. 0 for 3 on the day with, the, with three strikeouts. The pitch to Amos is grounded to third. Richie Allen is going to throw to Vic Power, and that retires the Royals in the eighth. They pick up one more. One run on a hit and a walk and one left. But it's late, and that ain't much. The Phillies lead going to the ninth inning, 7-2 to two, in Game 2 of the World Series. 
Richie Allen, Frank Thomas, Tony Gonzalez in the ninth. Allen, three for four with a solo dong in this one. It is a range check. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. Hit on the ground is second. Frank White does glove it and throws to Aikens for out number one in the ninth. Frank Thomas is one for three. He scored two runs. He's walked and he's whiffed. And Frank Thomas broke his bat, but this one's going to die happy as it lands in center field for a single for Thomas. We're going to get a pinch runner now for Frank. Not the speediest gentleman in 1964. And so the pinch runner is going to be... Mr. John Briggs. And Tony Gonzalez is due up. Two for four with a ribby and a whiff for Mr. Gonzalez. Consistent production from that man all tournament long. Two for four today. The pitch to Tony from Martin. Struck him out on some gas. That's two down for Philadelphia, and it brings up Alex Johnson. Alex, they're going to let him bat. They're going to let him bat against the right-hander. Doesn't usually happen, but they're up seven. Up six, sorry, 7-1. Seven, one. Johnson, one for four with a double and a run scored on his day. Range check. Range check. Second base, Frank White. More than up to the task. Gloves it and flips to Aikens, and that retires the Phillies in the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Chris Short still coming on to try and finish this one up. The Phillies pitching in two games has allowed four runs to this point. Bunning in game one and now Short Starting the ninth inning in game two, Baldshin has replaced Roebuck, but Chance is still throwing in the Phillies bullpen. Jack Baldshin and Bobby Chance throwing in case there's trouble in the bullpen. Gene Mock on the top step of the dugout. Aiken, Chris Short has thrown a lot of innings in this tournament. Aiken's 0 for 3 on the day. And he draws a walk to start the ninth. That's not what they wanted, and Mock has seen enough. That's going to do it. It's going to be Baldshin. Be careful how you say that. Mock steps out of the dugout and starts waving his right arm. A man gets on, and that's it. So Baldshin is coming on to face Cardinal. Roebuck gets up. And is throwing next to Bobby Chance in case Baldshin has trouble. Aikens is aboard. He's not going anywhere. Jose Cardinal is due, but they're going to bat for him. It's going to be Clint Hurdle batting for Cardinal. With nobody out and one man on in the bottom of the ninth. The Royals need five to keep it going. Clint, 294. in 1980 and batted a thousand at the buffet line the pitch is a ball two it's ball two to hurdle baldshin not throwing heat not throwing strikes hurdle ahead two balls no strikes the pitch to clint chopped off the plate straight up in the air Baldshin waits for it to come down. When it does, he's got no play, and Aiken stumbles to second base. The Royals have two men on with nobody out in the ninth. Some anxious moments for Phillies fans. It's 7-2. to 7-2 two. to two Philadelphia, but the Royals have two on with nobody out in the ninth. Porter standing in. He's 0-3 for 3 with a strikeout on the day. 
Darrell lifts this one to right. Callison toward the line. He's going to get there and make the play. That's one down. And he rifles the throw back in as Aikens retreats to second. And Hurdle goes back to first. Frank White is due. UL Washington is on deck. They're going to let Frank bat. Washington on deck. White is 0 for 3. The pitch to him. <coughs> Ball two. Nope. Yeah, ball two. Okay, next pitch from Baldshin is... Lifted in the air to center. Tony Gonzalez coming on, and that's two down. And now Washington is due. He's 0 for 3 today. Fry has seen enough. He's going to Rance Mullenix to pinch hit for UL Washington with two outs in the ninth. Mullenix, this is his first at bat in the tournament. He had 259 in 1980 with a .339 on base average. Washington is out of the game. They pinch hit for him with Rance Mullenix, a left-handed batting infielder. Baldwin to the belt. He checks Aikens at second. He checks Hurdle at first. The pitch home to Rance. Lifted in the air to center. Tony Gonzalez coming on, and the Phillies take a 2-0 lead in this World Series by sweeping the Royals at home in games 1 and 2. Chris Short is now 4-0. He is the winning pitcher in this game. He is 4-0 in the tournament. The loser, Larry Gurra who drops to 4-1 and one in the tournament. No save. The lead was too big, but Baldwin did close the door. For the victorious Philadelphia Phillies, the line scores. Seven runs on 14 hits off of Royals pitching, and they committed no errors for the Vanquished 1980 Kansas City Royals two runs on six hits, and they committed one error. As I said, the winning pitcher is Chris Short. He is 4 0. The loser, Larry Gura, he is 4 1. We now travel to Philadelphia for the game tomorrow, game three, with the Phillies leading this series two games to nothing. The opponents on the mound will be Rich Gale for the 1980 Kansas City Royals in a must-win game, if there ever was one, for that team. And Dennis Bennett for the left-hander for the 1964 Phillies, who was unavailable to the team down the stretch and might have made a big difference if he had been healthy. Um, yes, so I think that's it. We have games three, four, and five coming up in Philadelphia. Uh, five, of course, if needed. The Phillies take a 2 nothing lead in this World Series. They have allowed the Royals a total of four runs in two games. That is the story from here. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. Tell me how you like the series so far. Check out Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com. And thank you again for watching. My name's Kurt Berglund. Have a great day and so long, everybody.